Hi, I'm John Bevan, Managing Director of Voyage Privé. I got into travel um, a bit by luck. Um, I didn't do particularly well in my business um, degree and um, I was one of those that kind of quite enjoyed partying. Um, so at the end of my degree, my father asked me what I was going to do. I said I'd quite like to go into hotel and catering. And he suggested that he'd had enough paying for my education I should find a job and gave me a, a job application that happened to cross his desk, which was to work for a French hotel chain called Campanile, who still exists. And they were looking for, I was living in France then, they were looking for an English person living in France, because bilingual. So I wrote, I got my girlfriend to write the letter, wrote off, went for an interview, had three interviews with a stinking hangover, I remember it distinctively, and got the job. I stayed with them, which is quite unusual nowadays, 11 years, and worked my way up to sales director, where I basically ran uh, a team of um, sales guys based in countries, doing inbound tour operating, I mean inbound selling to tour operating coach operators into France. So I had offices in Spain, Italy, Germany, uh, representation in Poland, Czech Republic, Holland, and the UK. And then after 11 years, I decided to try my hand at something else, worked for a little incoming agency in Paris. I was still living in Paris then. And then met my, my current wife and decided to move back to England to live with her. And by then was a bit fed up with the hotel world, so I decided to try and go into tour operating. And was very lucky, um, some friends of mine uh, who ran a little tour a short break operator called Driveline gave me a job um, to work with them on building products, so I, I launched a Paris program for them and did some partnerships. And then after about a year I decided to, I had an opportunity with a friend of mine who's not in travel to set up a business, so we set up a company called Book That, which doesn't exist anymore unfortunately, we got initial funding from a private investor. And basically we built the first um, villa search engine, uh, which was aggregating about 6,000 villas from um, a whole series of villa operators who are now basically all owned by a Cottages Group. Um, so that wouldn't have had a long future. But we could have, we, would, we were literally the first villa site, um, 6,000 villas online, with distribution uh, across the EMAP, Bargain Holidays, A to B sites, um, the Beeb, which is the BBC website at the time, FreeServe, so we we're on all the big ISPs. Traffic was there, but people just in 2000, the year 2000, were not buying 1,500, 2,000 pound holidays online. So we ran out of cash, we tried to sell it. I tried to sell it to EMAP, who weren't in the mood to buy, but took me on uh, to run escape routes. And then from there, uh, within a few months, EMAP decided to get rid of the travel businesses and stick with their core magazine uh, business. And they asked me to take over and gave me three months to sell it. Um, so I'm not entirely sure how I did it because I've never done that before, but I managed to find two people interested who were Paige and Moy and OTC. Um, OTC bought it and I moved uh, then with the business to Twickenham and took some of my team with me and uh, ran Bargain Holidays A to B, One Ski, Waxed, a whole series of sites. Then we bought ifyouski.com and, and a few other sites, uh, all hotels. Um, and then we were consequently bought by lastminute.com. So that's kind of a quick run through how I got into, uh, how I started in travel, but also, I mean, I got into the online world quite early in the late 99, which, which I think has given me the chance um, to build up my expertise in the online world and selling holidays online from the very early stages where it, there was nothing online about it. Um, it was all call to action, but eventually online booking systems came in. I was consulting after I left lastminute.com and Voyage Privé had decided to set up, a bit, set up a, an office in the UK. They've been going since 2006 in France and very successful already. So they looked, um, they liked to work through contacts and networks, so they contacted Brent Hoberman um, and asked him if he could recommend anyone and he recommended me. So they came and contacted me um, in 2009 and uh, I'd never heard of them if I'm honest um, and then started researching the business um, and went to meet them in Aix-en-Provence in the head office met the four founders who are very inspirational guys um, was blown away with the business model and uh, and got the job. So Voyage Privé is a uh, 
members only travel club um, with, a, with a bit of a twist. So basically we are a travel agent, we're an ABTA travel agent and we have an atoll. So we build our own packages and so we tour operate it as well. Um, but the way that we sell our holidays uh, is through the means of uh, email newsletters. Members join, it's free to join. Uh, a big proportion of our members are, are viral, so they come re through recommendation from existing members. And the rest of the acquisition we do is very targeted. So it's not about a volume database, it's about a quality database. And we try and build a like-minded set of people. Um, so fairly affluent, um, internet savvy, love traveling, you know, your 45 plus category. So a great, great bunch of people to have on your database. And what we do is we put together about 45 offers a week. Um, they're all four and five, four and five star um, type holidays. And we give each week an array of different holidays that are typical for the season. So currently we're selling, of course, you know, the Mediterranean holidays, as well as some long haul, but some UK, London breaks, um, European cities, short breaks, Tuscany, you name it. So it's a, a range of offers that are, are right for people looking for different types of holidays at this time, at, at this kind of period of the season. It's a, it's a quirky business in, in that it's not about volume, it's about quality, it's about hand-picking offers. And it's about putting offers that we feel are right for our members in front of them on a weekly basis. And where the, the sting in the, in the tail is that basically they only have five days to book. But they can travel. We have holidays at the moment. You can book right through to February next year. So it's not about late deals. It's not about distressed stock. It's about doing a deal with a hotel that wants to market itself to a quality database. Um, and the way that we get the extra deals is because we only have a five-day sale window. Um, we manage to push the suppliers to give us that extra incentive. Plus, it's behind closed doors because it's a closed user group. So they're not going to be, uh, their rates aren't going to be sort of splashed all over the internet on the, across Google. So it kind of works for the supplier. They get huge visibility, access to some beautiful people that are going to spend well in their hotel. And at the same time, the members are getting to see a selection of amazing holidays, which are hand-picked for them. So we do all the hard work, the research. We know they rate well. We know they, they're good quality. The service levels are good. The locations are good. Otherwise, we wouldn't feature them. So it kind of works for both sides. As far as the trends are concerned, um, I ob we obviously operate in a, in a, only in the luxury end of, of the market and not the top luxury, but the sort of quality end of the market. So I can only really comment about that. One thing is for sure, we are seeing less 14-day holidays. People are taking shorter holidays. Um, as been widely reported, people are booking later. Um, and especially this year with the Olympics, we had a hell of a rush this week. Uh, post-Olympics, I think people held off before. In fact, we had a good push during, leading up to the Olympics, and then somehow, I think like, like me, everyone got glued to the TV every night, admiring how well Team GB were doing, which was fantastic. But, um, so I think trends-wise, I'd say the core ones is, you know, we are seeing less of the long holidays because it's just budget. So people are having to manage their budgets more. Interestingly enough, we are seeing quite a lot of repeat purchase for short stays. So I think some people are breaking up their holidays and doing different experiences. I think there's um, less of the go away for two weeks lying on the beach doing nothing. I mean, although there's still plenty of people who want to do that. In our, in our category, in, in our type of clients, um, and a lot of them are, as I said before, quite internet savvy and have traveled well. When they see an opportunity to go and do something a bit different on our site, they'll try it and they will, they will literally book within, we only put on the, the office on sale for five days, so they're literally grabbing an offer they hadn't even thought of doing. Um, and indeed, I don't know if you know what I've got on, on the site in two weeks' time, so it really is um, exciting for everyone. And, and I think that you know, the, the inspirational and spontan spontaneous aspect of it is definitely there, and people are making up decisions very quickly. So I think the core trends is shorter stays, more short stays. Um, and we've seen a big increase in UK. Uh, our UK products, although we, we've got more on site, we're selling more of each one than we were this time last year. So I think, you know, uh, I know that in the, tour, in the sort of holiday world, we always kind of want to be pushing people to go abroad, um, but we've got quite a nice offering in the UK, so we're quite happy with them picking those. So UK, shorter holidays, I'd say, is probably the key two trends. If I focus primarily on the online business that I know best and let's face it now I think it's virtually everyone researches online so we can't get away from it. I'd say the biggest challenge we've got and I'm across most sites I just think is that we've become very lazy 
uh, as an industry, and it's all about volume. So there was this huge chase for uh, connectivity, plug in as many hotels as you can, as many airlines as you can, and let the customer decide. So there's lots of sites now that do an amazing job at dynamic packaging. Um, and when you do a search on a, on a city like Paris or Rome or whatever it might be, or even a, a Greek holiday, you could have four, five, six, seven hundred holidays come back. Um, and I think the big challenge is, is for the industry in general is trying to meet our customers' demand and helping them find a holiday and not flooding them with a mass of hundreds, if not thousands of holidays, which absolutely doesn't help them at all. So, and then we say, oh, yeah, well, fine, because they can refine, they can tick four, five star, they can do this, that, and the other. But I've done it myself. And, you know, you, when you go through the process, by the time you get anywhere near maybe having 30 offers, you're knackered. You know, you're just fed up of what you're looking at. You just someone, you want someone to say to you, try these three. You know, if we went into a, a coffee shop and uh, they said to you, well, we've got 15 different types of cakes to choose from you go well, I, I don't know which one I want you know just give me a choice of a couple it's more than enough and I think travel's gone too far that way it's all about volume about you know the OTAs pride themselves because they've got 50,000 75,000 100,000 hotels worldwide you know we work on I think our total database is hundreds um, and each week we only put out 45 offers and yet you know we're growing massively and uh, our conversion rates are better than a lot of the sites I've worked on in the past. So I think just this mass confusion and the fact that we're not helping the customer to actually choose a holiday um, is, is our biggest challenge. And I think unless we start thinking, or this OTAs in general start thinking more about what the customer wants and the customer journey and how they can get there and try and simplify it and personalize it more, you know, the conversion rates won't improve and they're just literally throwing muscle power at it um, rather than trying to actually offer a, a potential customer a, s a small selection of offers which they're happy to take. As far as I'm concerned, the, the best or the biggest achievement that um, I, I can think of at the moment that I've been involved in is, is the Voyage Privé and the, the achievement, the, the growth we've generated in two years. I've got a young, a young because they're all younger than me, team of um, people um, who deliver amazing work, um, work really hard. The Voyage Privé model is tough because it's, um, it's 52 games a year. It's, every week is a, is a new game. Unlike most travel sites that work on seasonality, we have to be, be good every week, of, every week of the year. So what I'm particularly proud of is the, gr the growth this year, you know, triple figure growth on a business that's now starting to become sizable um, and managing that growth and still and delivering more members more product, um, we more than double the product range year on year, keeping the quality, keeping the conversion rates, improving them all the time. Um, that's what I'm really proud of, is a, is a team that's pulled together and worked really hard. And this summer has been really tough because we had to counterbalance the Olympics effect. Um, and I think we did a ma massive, brilliant job with that. When you grow a business from, 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 a, from nothing, when I joined we were three to 26 people, is you can't overload with people because obviously you've got budgets to stick to and trying to grow the business at a rate where you've got enough people to sustain the growth and you're not actually wearing everyone out too fast and then adding, the, adding when necessary. And I think that's what I'm proud of is that the team have managed to, to step up to the mark and deliver the growth. Well, for me, and I think it's been quite well documented, it's the whole bonding issue. Um, it's a mess. Um, we have at all bonding for flights. If you do a rail plus a hotel, then if you're not apt to, then you've got to find some way of um, protecting that money. Um, same with the ferries. Um, we've got this agent status, where when you're selling as agent, you've basically got no responsibilities. So you can sell any old product you like, take your commission, then tell the client to deal with the, with the principal. And genuinely speaking, you ask any person in the street, they haven't got a clue really whether they're bonded not not bonded people are carrying APTA logos when they're not even APTA and or Atoll logos because they represent Atoll holders but they don't put that wording in so the whole thing's a mess personally I think they should make it like most of the rest of Europe where whoever sells the holiday is responsible for the holiday and I know that won't be a very popular comment but if you think about it logically 
if like in France, everyone, every agent was responsible for what they sell, then everyone would have to be bonded. Um, therefore, it means it brings down the overall cost if every single holiday was just under the same structure rather than have CAA for one thing, APTA for something else. And, you know, whether it be one of the travel associations that now do the bonding for their own agents, or, you know, just, just put it all under one, one hat and then reduce the, the, the costs across the industry or maybe debate it and push it to the insurance market and then um, say to clients, well, okay, you will have to have insurance for repatriation and things like that. You have to take it just like you have to have insurance to drive a car. Um, but I do think something needs to be addressed and we've got to stop having people that sell as agent, which basically means you can sell something you don't believe in and not really care if you're not customer care focused. The way I work at Voyage Privé is I put a big emphasis on the customer care aspect. So we treat our, our customers as mem well, they're members before they become customers. If they've got any issues, they're all dealt with. And if the tour operator is not quick enough to respond, we push them hard. You know, the ABTA rules say you've got 28 days to respond to a customer complaint. Um, I've made it seven. And when you do that, you get less complaints because people, you, you nail it, sort it out. And I think if everyone took responsibility for what they sell and were ultimately um, the principal, then you'd, have, you'd be able to bond the whole lot. It'd be a lot simpler, more people would be bonded, and I, I'm sure it'd bring the, the cost down. So, but I do think that needs to be debated and sorted out because the poor old customer hasn't got a clue what's going on. I'd say for peop people who want to start in the travel industry, and if you're passionate about it, then do it. Don't be scared about it. Um, it is more complicated now, I think, than 10, 15 years ago. Um, regulatory issues are more complex, but there's people there, fantastic people that, that can advise you on that. So really is get advice on that, sort out what you can and can't do, what's a package, what's not a package, all this kind of stuff. My advice would be go niche rather than mass market, because mass market, unless you're lucky that you've got someone with a pot of money willing to burn it, you're up against some well-established big guys already that do it fantastically well. Um, so I think if you see a niche in the market, there's still opportunities, there's still some fantastic little businesses out there that we don't hear much about um, that have carved an, a, a little area for themselves and they're working on it. Uh, I met a business that do rent out chateaus in France, in Tuscany or in, in Italy um, as, a, as units, you know, and people take them for weddings and things like that. It's a tiny business, high, high booking value. Um, it's ticking along nicely, it's making a profit, you know, fantastic and no one's heard of them and and uh, so there's still loads of opportunities and they did it coming out of university the guy was trying to look to book a thing a, a chateau for an event and thought so difficult why don't I do it myself and a lot of in traveling a lot of the travel businesses that did exist have now been bought up by by the big guys and were started by passionate people so I think if you've got that passion for travel just go for it get the advice on on the on the sort of legal side of things, because it is complex now, um, all the bonding and so on. But you can get the advice on that and just do it.